everybody welcome back to the civil 3d earthwork series uh we are on our second episode today and i am so so excited because i will be teaching you guys how to create a platform slope the platform and also how to create the platform so as civil engineers we are governed by sets of standards and specifications that we need to follow and conform to when we do our designs so it is so so important to know which area you are working in and know if you are governed by municipal standards or you are governed by your client um, standards. So as soon as you are done sitting with their client and they told you that they want a block of flats, they want a parking base and you have sat around and you know how the block plan is going to look like, you are now ready to start your designs. So um, in my case, before I start any design, the first thing that I do, I look at the geotech report. So the geotech report will give you a guideline in terms of how you can carry out your earthwork design. If the soil properties, the strength is good, and the geotech says you can go ahead and just take off your topsoil, rip and recompact and start building, that simply means that you have to keep your platforms to the natural ground level as much as you can. That's the first thing. So secondly, if the geotech report comes back and tells you that you that soil properties are so bad that maybe you need to dig about a meter and spoil and then import good material into the site, that already tells you that, mm, so the client um, will have a costly earthworks um, that you have to do. So you will have to check, okay, that means I must have, I have to cut as much as I can so that my final platform levels are in cut and we don't necessarily have to import a lot of materials into the site. So your geotech report is the one that basically give you a guidance on how you can do your design. The second thing that I do is to check how the ground is sloping. So you go under annotate, you go under home, um, annotate, at labels, and then the surface label, you say contour multiple. I do contour multiple because I just want to see how the side is sloping. This helps you again to know so that should you have to work on the whole uh, bigger area where you have to do catchments, then it's not a lot of work trying to catch the water going in different direction or, or all of that. So at least you will be knowing that you didn't design against your contours. You actually followed the natural um, topography of the site and you are sloping in accordance with that. So at the moment you can see that um, the ground is sloping in the northeasterly direction. So 1711 is higher than 1706 so i already know that whatever that i am going to do i will slope my site in the northeasterly direction so as soon as you know those properties you know what your geotech report is saying you know how your ground is sloping then you can start with your design so under the home tab there is one that says feature line you just drop it down and say create feature line from objects you click your objects and you say enter so um you can give it a site let's say you have a parking bays you have buildings and they're all on different elevations you can easily just give it a, a name but in my case i'm going to leave it as site one you can change your style i'm going to leave as it, as it as it is you can put it on a different layer if you want to and here on conversion option options, I like to assign elevation. You, see, you click on assign elevation and you say, okay. So it asks you, do you wanna assign elevation from giving it an elevation? So after you've put on your contour labels, you will be able to tell, let's say which one is your center contour, for example. If you were basically just practicing a cut and fill exercise, you can just come here and say 1708.4 looks like the center contour. Then everything that is on the other side of 
uh, point four will be in cut. They're gonna cut everything that is higher, and then they're gonna fill everything that is lower than that. So chances are you will be more or less also in the right direction. But in my case, I like to say from surface, I just wanted to take what is currently here, what is currently on the NGL and I say, okay. So I now have my feature line. If you click here, you'll see that it's now a feature line. If you go under elevation editor, so um, station, it's, it's where it starts and the distances as it goes. Elevation is the current NGL elevation that the station has. So this green triangle shows you where you are. So at zero, it's this corner and it's at this elevation. At 90.470 is at this corner. So the green triangle moves as you move your points. You see, it moves as you move your points. And also it tells you at what um, percent it's sloping among each other. So um, let's say you want everything to slope at 1%, right? And we know that we want everything to slope in the northeasterly direction. So we already know that elevation 1706, we want to be the lowest one because it's the one that we want every, the water to grade to. So what you do, you can start it at this 19, at this um, 90.470 distance. And what you do, you do the 1% in all direction so we want it to slope at one percent in all the other directions so as you can see now everything is sloping at one percent and we say okay so we are happy that everything is sloping at one percent and we want to create a surface from it so as soon as you you've chosen at what percent you want everything to slope you come under grading creation tools. Um, the first one says create a grading group. This is where you can give it a name and you call it platform GG. I'm just giving it a name and it says automatic surface creation. You tick that. Yes, we want it to automatically create a surface. We don't want it to create a volume surface at the moment, but you can also tick that if you want to, and it will automatically calculate your cut and your fill. You say, okay. As soon as you're done with that, you see it comes here. It has created your surface. You say, okay. There is now your platform GG that you've created. The second tab says select surface. What it's asking you is that when you are grading, which surface do you want your feature line to target? Remember, it can be in cut and fill, but we are grading towards our NGL. Everything is to the ground level. We are cutting into the ground level or we are filling into the ground level. Then you say, okay. Then this one is the layer works that you wanted to put on. And then here you tell it if you want it to grade to a surface or grade to elevation or grade to a distance or grade to a relative elevation in our case we're not going to complicate matter we're going to put it on grade to surface we have our ngl and we just want it to grade to the ngl and as soon as you're done with that the next tab they ask you to infill so the first thing that we're going to do is to infill our slab say enter that line shows you that it has infilled so if you click on it and you say object viewer you will see that currently is just, you know, it's just in fill. You can't see if it's in cut or in fill or what's going on. So you're going to come here on the drop down and say create grading. Remember, we have said that we are grading to the surface. So it, it asks you to select the grading feature line. You've selected the feature line and then you say enter. It asks you to select the grading site. Sometimes you might find that you are right next to a wall and then you won't i uh, grade the whole side, but in our case, we're going to grade the entire length of the feature line. You say, yes, you want it to grade to the entire length. It will ask you your cut format and your fill format. So this one, um, be careful to look into your client specifications and standards. They will normally tell you that they prefer one in two or they prefer one in three. Whatever their preference, this is where you put it. So in my case, I wanted to 
um, cut in one in two and also fill. I wanted to um, cut in a slope of one in two. You say enter and you want it to fill in a slope of one in two. And you say enter. As soon as you've done with that, you can now see something happened to your platform. If you say object view again, um, can you now see we are mostly in cut? Can you see? So all of this is in cut. All of this is in cut. All of this is in cut. And depending on what your geotechnical report said, you would normally like to be in fill if the material is good. So as soon as you see um, all of this, you come here on a style and maybe you say no display. Uh, you come back to your feature line and say, hmm, I don't like what I am seeing. So maybe you want to increase everything by, let's say, 500 mils. So you come here under set increment and you say 0 0.5. I work in meters, so mine is going to be 0 0.5. If you work in millimeters, it's going to be 500. And then you will have this arrow that says you want to raise it or you want to drop it down. So I want to raise everything by 500 mils, but I still want to keep my um, slopes at 1%. Then you just say, okay. So I have raised everything to 1%. And I now want to see how the surface is looking. I'm going back to surface styles of triangles. I don't see any change. I don't know if you guys can see any change. Still in cut, as you can see. Oh, it means my cut was so messy. It's still in cut. Um, so I'm going to select the feature line again and maybe raise it up by 2 meters, for example. So I'm just going to select the feature line, come here and say a meter or 1.5 so that the total is 2 meters. I'm going to say 1.5, control all, and I'm going to increase everything by 1.5. Can you see? I saw something happening now. So now all of there is a green line and a red line, meaning there is some 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 form of cut and filling that is going on and as soon as you do this you go to I want to see what the surface looks like now you say okay let's see how it looks like now so now I'm in fill my lowest point is still maintained which is that one there but I'm now in fill and we're cutting a bit there maybe um based on what we want, this is what we are looking for. And we can now just put our NGL on mode display and we want to put our new surface on contours. So now if you want to give your contours a label, you come to add labels and we want to say contour multiple and click there so as you can see this is still the highest 1709.4 is still the high it's still higher than 1708 so we're still sloping in the direction that we initially wanted to slope in but now our cut and fill looks much better and um depend remember the basis of your design should be based on what the client prefers based on your geotech report did you and your client sit down and say we prefer cut and fill exercise because of one, two, and three? Whatever you 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 design to, please always substantiate why. Have your why as to why you're doing it. So um, then, as soon as you have done now your platform, you have created it in one in one to two, and then you can always now check your your check your volume dashboard so as soon as you come here we now want to just see what our cut and fill looks like i'm just gonna call it volume our base surface will be our ngl and our comparison surface will be our platform gg so you say okay then according to the dashboard 
is telling us that we are in a fill of 2,386 cubes and we are in a cut of 293 cubes. Depending on the soil material, this might be good, this might be bad. So if it's bad, you always go back to, um, you always go back to your feature line. You try to work on, if now I want more cut, what is it that I must do? It means maybe 1% is not gonna work. Let me make it 2%. That way I'll have more cut and less uh, fill or I will balance the two. And then as soon as you see your dashboard, it tells you what's going on. You can always go back, do what I'm telling you to do. And then now that you know how to um, create your feature line, what happens, how to slope, how to grade, let me close this one and close that one also. Um, you can come to your volume surface, surface creation. Let's say you want to see in what area you are cutting and in what area you are filling. So according to my dashboard, it's telling me that we are digging 800 mils and we are filling two meters. This might look bad depending on what the geotech report says. If you want to manage the cut and fill, it means you'll have to come back to your feature line. Maybe 1% is not such a, um, a good um, slope. Maybe you might have to make it steeper to maybe 2% or make it shallower to 0 0.5 depending. So if you click on that one, it's a quick grading tool that says, oh, let's say you want to make it 2%. You can quickly click that one and come and say 2%. Did you see it changed? And then you come here again still says one percent you quickly come and say you wanted a two percent now it looks much better did you see previously we were at there now we are here so as soon as you see this it will show um this exclamation mark to say something has changed you need to rebuild your surface as soon as you click the rebuild surface you will see that your volume dash won't be the same anymore because something happened so if we go under analyze and we check our volume dash you'll see that we are now at a cut of 627 and we are at a fill of 744 cubes depending again on what the geotech was saying if you had to balance your cut and fill voila we are now good to go it looks good we have sloped two percent in um, our lowest side uh, our cut and fill is in balance and yeah so this will be looking good and as soon as you're done with that if you want to see in what area you are cutting and filling so you also have to just reload this one now we are only filling a meter we are cutting 800 mils so you come here and you say okay let's say you want um, the surface to show in in elevations on your drawing you just come and click elevations you say okay as you can see the purple was was in cut and the red was in fill so now if the client comes and say oh in what area are we cutting in what area are we filling you are able to say oh okay we are cutting in this area we are filling in this area our fill is about a meter our cut is about 800 mils and voila um i hope you will learn a lot from this exercise remember it's in a small area but you can always apply it to a bigger scope the concept is the same uh, you can work with feature lines um, I'll try to see if I can not do another exercise where we work with um, different things but for now I hope this will help you um, and yeah thank you so much for always tuning in and thank you for the support thank you bye